Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about anti-dive geometry and there's going to be a lot of similarities between this and roll centers so if you haven't yet checked out my video on roll centers you may want to check that out first. I will include a link in the video description. So what is anti-dive geometry? Well basically what you're trying to do is preventing body dive for example, when you're decelerating, when you're braking, the front of the car is going to want to tilt forward uh, if you don't have this anti-dive geometry. Um, and basically what you're doing is you're going to be loading your suspension, your springs, and your shocks and uh, compressing that on the front. And so with anti-dive geometry, what you're doing is you're transferring that force instead of transferring it through the spring and the damper, what you're going to be doing is putting it through the suspension linkage itself. So through your control arms, your bushings, etc., things like that. Um, so like I mentioned, the idea very similar to that of roll centers. So how you locate uh, basically anti-dive geometry, basically what you're going to do is instead of having parallel uh, control arms, you're going to have them at an angle. So your suspension links are going to be angled. And so you're going to find the intersection point of those control arms. This is just like the instantaneous center uh, when we were looking at roll centers, except now we're looking at the side of the car rather than the front of the car. And then you're going to connect a line between the bottom of the tire where that meets the ground, uh, the center of that, and to the point where these uh, lines intersect. And so wherever that line intersects with the line bisecting basically the center of gravity is going to be how much anti-dive you have. So this is typically uh, kind of described as, you know, something might have 20% anti-dive, 30% anti-dive. Um, you know, realistically, you're going to be probably somewhere under 25%, something like that. Um, but what we've drawn here, basically, you're just measuring the distance uh, as a percentage between the ground and the center of gravity where that line connecting from the bottom of the tire intersecting the point where the suspension links intersect, uh, where that intersects with this line bisecting the center of gravity. And so that point, that intersection, if that's 60% of the distance uh, from the ground to the center of gravity, you would say that this has 60% anti-dive geometry. So something with 100% anti-dive geometry, essentially what you're doing is the line where the suspension components uh, intersect will lie on the line uh, connecting the center of gravity and the point beneath the tire. So if, as long as that happens, as long as it occurs, the intersection of these suspension components occurs with on this line, you're going to have 100% anti-dive. So what that means is all of the uh, load transfer, all of the uh, forces when you're braking are going to be passing through these uh, suspension arms rather than through the uh, spring and damper. So, you know, there are some negative consequences associated with that. But basically, what are your design goals when you're designing something with anti-dive geometry? Well, essentially what you're trying to do is reduce suspension geometry changes uh, associated with nose dive. So when you do have a lot of nose dive, you know, you can have an increase in camber, uh, different wheel alignment issues where you won't have as much traction. So you're trying to eliminate that by eliminating uh, dive. Now you also want to maintain aer aerodynamic characteristics uh, of the vehicle and so typically what you do when you're designing a uh, race car uh, for aerodynamic purposes you want it to maintain at a certain ride height and so if that ride height changes your aerodynamics become more or less efficient typically less efficient and so what you want to do is maintain a certain ride height and so by having this uh, anti-dive geometry you can prevent changes in the front ride height as well as the rear ride height and the aerodynamic consequences that are associated with that. So the drawbacks associated with having something with 100% anti-dive or a good portion of anti-dive is that you're stiffening those front suspension components and you're making it less compliant to surface irregularities. So by stiffening that front you know you're basically reducing the amount of uh, suspension that it is, uh, how it acts as a suspension and so you know you don't necessarily want that to occur. Um, you want, you know, soft so that it comply with the road conditions. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.